Barakabah, welcome. This is Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Bruck on the 7th day of January 2021. I plan on talking about something totally different. But given the events of yesterday in the, in the United States, I cannot ignore speaking to it. Now, this is not a political ministry. It is a teaching ministry. So let's analyze what happened from a historical and spiritual viewpoint. For those who might not be aware, there was a large gathering of Americans at our nation's Capitol building yesterday, which was called to support President Trump and require a decision regarding allegations of election fraud. At some point, violence broke out and a handful of people broke windows and stormed into the Capitol building. The police were called in. They shot and killed at least one woman and other deaths have been reported. Eventually, the crowds were told to disperse and they did. There were tens of thousands of people there. No other damages to buildings or looting were done except for the broken windows to the Capitol building. This country began as a refuge for those who wanted to worship God as they chose. When we felt unfairly controlled by the crown in England, we rebelled. But at first, it wasn't to be independent. We only wanted things to go back to how they were. The Boston Tea Party and the rebellion against the Stamp Act all the people wanted was for those laws to be repealed. It wasn't really until the Declaration of Independence was drafted that anyone really think about breaking from England altogether. And after the new country of America had been under the Articles of Confederation for 11 years and was dying economically as well as socially, the Continental Congress was called to revise the Articles. They closed and locked the doors and in secret, illegally, they revised the Articles of Confederation by deep sixing them and creating the one thing the First Continental Congress did not want, a strong central government. And thank God they did. And because this country and its leaders at that time were God-fearing men, they were able to come up with the U.S. Constitution. And because our government, our courts, and our society were faithfully adherent to the way God said we should live and treat each other, he blessed this nation with financial and societal strength, making it a place where everyone else in the world wanted to go to live for the opportunities it provided. In the last couple of decades, we have decided that God has no place in our system of government or in our courts, schools, or even society. And the leaders of this country, who at the beginning made sure that everything they did was based on what God said, have done a complete 180. God says there are two genders. Today, the government says people can be any gender they want to be, even going as far as to support the idea that children who haven't even gone through puberty yet can decide which gender they want to be. The murder of children, which is no different than child sacrifice to the pagan gods of the Semitic tribes of ancient days, is now financially supported and guaranteed by the government called abortion. Our government leaders, especially the ones who are now coming into nearly complete power, have decided that Israel is not to be allowed to exist. They support verbally and financially the Palestinian people who, who never really existed until Yasser Arafat created them as a propaganda campaign. They support these people, a people who only want to destroy Israel and kill all the Jews they can. They teach their children as early as kindergarten that it is a good thing to kill Jews and the more Jews they kill, the more reward they will receive in heaven. Who would have ever thought that America would not just condone but support both verbally and financially any country that teaches its children it is a good thing to kill other people? Now, the Democrats have denounced the violence at the Capitol but didn't say one word about all the BLM and Antifa rioting and destruction of property, not to mention the murder of police in the past, except for the fact that, the, well, these were actually peaceful protests. Come on, people. Really? Yet there are many people who believe that. And why? Because their hatred is stronger than their love. It's stronger than their common sense, and it's stronger than their judgment. 
In Matthew 7, 2, Yeshua teaches us about judging others. In the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measuring you use, it will be measured to you. So all who hate will be treated the same way they treat the ones they hate. And when you ask people why they hate, so often all I hear is because he or she is a certain type of person. I'm not going to use a lot of the language I hear. <laughs> hey, is this a country or a high school? Are our elected officials, especially the president, qualified by how nice a person they are? Or by what plans they have for improving the country and their ability to meet those plans and accomplish them? I mean, is the president supposed to be friendly to everyone and smiling all the time, never offending anyone? You know what that means? That's the same as not having any moral compass. Or is he supposed to be a leader with a specific set of standards? People, this country is not the America I was willing to fight and die for when I was in the Marine Corps. It is most certainly not the America my father fought for in World War II or my uncle, who was a MASH doctor, risked his life for during the Korean War. And it is no longer blessed by God because we have rejected him. We have replaced him with sexual perversity, sports figures, fast cars, technology, and financial gain. Hey, we don't have time to pray because we're too busy on Facebook or Twitter, reading and spreading gossip, believing what we are told on the internet or from the corrupted media. And when we reject God, God will give us time to repent and come back to him despite how sinful we may have become. But eventually, even God will have to accept that repentance is not coming. And as such, the only thing left is judgment. In Jeremiah 7.16, God told Jeremiah not to pray for Judea because the time for judgment had come. It was too late to turn away the fierce anger and just punishment that God now had to deal out on them. And, my brothers and sisters, I am telling you here now that we in America are in the same spot. God used the Assyrians to, put, to punish Shamrom, and he used the Babylonians to punish Judah. Now, he is using our own leaders to destroy us from the inside. Pray if you want to, but don't pray for these people or this country because our time for repentance has come and gone. Pray for quick relief. <laughs> pray that you will be able to financially survive the punishment. And pray that God will lift up in the midst of this Zorus we will be undergoing. A leader who will bring God back into our society and courts and that this country will rise like a phoenix from the ashes of the destroying fire we have brought down on ourselves and return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our God, Father, Lord, Creator, and King, please be merciful in this, your righteous indignation with our country and leaders and speed an end to the punishment we and our fathers deserve. We have sinned against thee and have committed grievous abominations, all the while ignoring your good instructions. Forgive our stupidity, pride, and selfishness. Remove the stain of our sexual perversity and spiritual misguidance of the people and bring us back into communion with you through your Messiah, Yeshua. We await your just punishment and ask in Yeshua's name that you mercifully protect those who still honor and worship you. And when the sword strikes, please get it over with quickly. Amen.